as you can tell, our, uh, our pastor, please be seated. Our pastor is away. He's uh, coming back from ball game up in South Dakota with uh, Corey and the family. So it sounds like they had a good game. They won and uh, probably on their way back as we're speaking right now. So we need to lift them up in prayer as well. Uh, a couple of notes out of the bulletin. Uh, definitely turn to this thing if you're looking for items that are maybe coming up in uh, on the calendar or information you might have or questions. If, it, if your questions are unanswered, we'd love to answer them for you. You can just uh, catch me after service or during service or whatever. Also, I'd like to call your attention to the response card on the bottom right. Now, that is for mostly for visitors. It was also an update card. I think we have some old phone numbers for some of you. Or maybe you've let your landline go and now you're just only on a cell phone. We'd really like to have that update. We, uh, when we send out the one call now, it tells us that sometimes there's up to uh, 10 phone numbers that are different now. So if you have a new phone number, you'd like to put a different phone number on the one call now. Or if you'd like to be taken off the one call now, which is the automatic call uh, deal that we use where we uh, can send out a message to all of you at one time. If you're not a part of that, we'd love for you to be a part of that. Also, you can get a text message if, if you mark that. Or we can also just add you to our email list. We would love to communicate with you over this. And we also have a newsletter that we can send out to you. If you're not getting a newsletter, it's a, a great document that lets you know what's going on in our church, what's coming up, things like that. And then you also get to, to hear of stories from families. And we are looking for those. So if you have not turned in your forms for getting to know you and you took one of those forms, we'd love to have your picture and your form back because we're already working on the November edition of the newsletter. Can you believe that? It will be snowing here in four weeks. There's probably only eight weeks or maybe eh, a little bit, a, little, a few more, probably what, 10-ish Saturdays before Christmas maybe? I don't know. Does that really blow your mind for a minute? I just did some bad math, I think. But anyway, uh, not too many Saturdays left the shop and uh, a, lot, a lot coming right around the corner. So you definitely want to be plugged in to all of our communication so that we can uh, keep you informed. So today is Life Chain Sunday. This is the day where uh, they stand at the plaza starting at 2 p.m., uh, and stand for uh, uh, life, and, uh, and stand uh, stand there, I don't know how long they stand, probably for uh, up to an hour, I guess, but he said arrive early so they can stand. They make a chain of people to um, make a awareness that uh, uh, abortion does kill lives. So this is a stance for life in itself, so awesome. Also, uh, men's prayer breakfast, sounded like they had a good one. We also had a good evening with uh, the kiddos at, uh, at our fifth quarter, all the Teenagers that showed up, I thank you for your time. It does not go unnoticed. Uh, uh, Tracy and uh, Miss Laura and Miss Pam Edwards, all of them uh, helped me so much in getting ready, and uh, some others helped me in getting ready for, for our thing on Friday night. Our fifth quarter was, uh, I think, a success. We showed some Tim Hawkins videos. It was, a, it was an awesome evening of laughter, and we had some basketball, and we had a very hot fire. And the funny thing is, is that if you, you know, uh, we'll just talk about guys for a minute. You know, if, if you're a guy and you fail at lighting the fire, that's just really not something you want going around. You know what I'm saying? So whenever we stack the wood up and I lit it, I used pretty well the whole container of lighter fluid. I wanted to make sure that, that we did not have a fire that went unnoticed. And uh, we didn't. Uh, matter of fact, I think every single person complained about how hot it was. And uh, that's why, you know, I mean, we're spoiled to death. Our fires are not, our, our fires are too hot now. So I don't even know what to say about that. So uh, thank you for all of you that come out to that. Uh, also, Operation Christmas Child, don't, we, don't forget you're supposed to be filling out, filling up your boxes. And then uh, we're going to have a special note here from Chrissy. She's going to come up. She's going to share something with you. And uh, also, uh, Judgment House and Zipline, our sign-up list is outside. It's about three weeks away. And we're going to be having that uh, sign up and then we'll be leaving here at one o'clock on Saturday, October 26th. Uh, we have reservations out at our zip lining place in Sullivan. And then we'll, right after that, go to our judgment house like we have the last couple of years. We're looking forward to that. That's mostly for teenagers, but there's always some adults that want to tag along, which is totally fine. So, Miss Chrissy, where are you at? There you are, back there. She's going to come up. She has something to share with you. Any other things we might have left out today? Announcements? I feel like I'm missing one thing. Anybody have one thing? Come on. Um, just want to give everyone a little bit of an update on my sister and the baby. Um, first of all, thank you all for praying for them. Um, 
they found out the syndrome that Noah has, and um, it's um, not good, but he's going to be fine. Um, he's getting ready to have a feeding tube inserted with surgery in the next few weeks. Um, he has severe reflux, so he's going to have to have surgery with that and a sphincter in his stomach. Um, and not only dealing with the stress of them being an hour away, um, Derek's at home working during the week in their hometown, and um, they're away for five days from each other. And on Thursday night, when Derek was home alone, he had a horrible seizure and um, pulled both, both of his shoulders out of socket and broke both of them. So uh, not only they have the stress of Noah, um, Derek is unable to work now for God knows how long. So if you all would just give some extra prayers to them for God to continue his strength and get them through this. And also for me, please. Um, it's really hard being away from them, and my mom's been out there for a month. So uh, I don't know how I'd get through this without God and my wonderful husband. So thanks. Thank you. We're going to do that right now. We have uh, Noah. And your brother's name is? Brother and sister. And Sarah. Let's pray for them right now, and we'll also uh, um, Pastor Rogers traveling and all that. God, we thank you so much for uh, this family. Uh, this family of Derek and Sarah. Sarah is uh, a sister that means so much, uh, and uh, you can see the brokenness uh, here today. God, uh, can you help just come down and comfort this family? Let them feel your presence. They have uh, uh, an awesome new baby that uh, sometimes they may feel frustrated with, because we know that uh, we know that Noah was born with a handicap, but he was he was also born as you see him, which is uh, possibly a soul winner, uh, someone that's going to reach people, and this family has opportunity to reach others that maybe have handicaps. And God just uh, continue to lift this family. Continue, uh, continue to lift Chrissy as uh, she's trying to support them uh, from away and be a support to them. Uh, God, is uh, our church family doesn't really uh, grasp the whole thing, let us just understand that, that uh, one of our family members is hurting because their family's hurting. Let us realize that there is a, a need for hugs. Let us realize that there is a need for uh, maybe monetary support that you have uh, called certain ones to. Maybe there's a, a need for uh, something that someone can reach out to this family with. God, just uh, let them see that uh, these things could be the, the things that are turning them toward God, not the things that are just frustrations, Lord. Today, as uh, we also pray for our pastor as he's traveling, uh, give him the safety of the road and uh, with his family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, I think we covered all of the things, all of our announcements. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll have our ushers come forward. We'll have our offering. We'll receive that. And then we'll have the reading of our scripture as well. Scripture reading this morning um, tells us that uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Um, the fear, of, I've heard somebody say that means to uh, take God seriously, take his word seriously. And it says in Proverbs, at his word, it says in Proverbs 3, uh, blessed is a man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. Wisdom through our Lord. Seek it in all that you do. Lord, we just... Uh, Pray at this time that we would be a people that take you seriously. 
and understand that your word is true and just uh, blaze that on our hearts, Lord, the truth of your gospel. And Jesus, what he did, Lord, uh, through the love that you showed us, just let us be a people who grasp onto that and all that we do. And as we come now, Lord, to bring our tithes and our offerings, let us do it joyfully, returning to you, just part of the many blessings you've given us. Let us use those funds and gifts wisely, Lord, to further your kingdom, to spread the word, the precious truth of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning again. Let's see if I can make the mic change. Might have to kill the pulpit mic now. <clears throat> it's good to be here. I know some of you are wondering what has happened to our pastor. And I assure you he is coming back. I assure you I am not as golden as he is and seasoned as he is in the pulpit. But I, I do believe that today I have a message brought to you uh, by our Lord. And um, I also believe that we are all ordained to be here today. I believe that the message that you will hear are, is a message that uh, has been prepared uh, maybe for, for each and every one of you for sure, but specifically for some of you. So we have a, a couple. We have several scriptures today that I want to read to you. We'll be bouncing around a lot, but uh, I do. Uh, I do want us to start off with prayer this morning. <clears throat> God, I just thank you for the ability that you've given each and every one of us to come and worship. We have uh, just stood here and proclaimed your name through song. Uh, some of us may have come here with certain expectations today, and. Uh, maybe being able to uh, think one thing was going to happen, but it's uh, something different already. God, I pray that you continue to uh, mold me. I, could, I pray that you continue to mold the sermon into words that would be yours and not just mine, but uh, would be coming from the, the heart of God this morning. And uh, God, let us, uh, let us leave here full of joy today. Let us leave here uh, after even the Lord's Supper that we will... Uh, leave here knowing you better, that we didn't just come to fill the pew today. We didn't just come today to check a box, Lord. We come today to worship you, to find you, to look for you in our lives, and to find answers possibly for the questions that we have. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So here in a minute we will be in uh, Hebrews 12. And uh, well, actually, I would like to read, I don't have it in front of me, but I'd like to read that out of the King James. And other than that, we'll be in the NIV. <clears throat> so this weekend uh, it was kind of a, an interesting weekend for me. It was very full. It's actually this past week was very full for me. We had, uh, I preached a funeral on Thursday of uh, someone I, I didn't know well. I, uh, I also got to preach last Sunday, right? You guys that were here, right? You remember that? Okay, good. And uh, you get to hear me again today. Uh, I promise I won't go as long as I did last week. My wife informed me it was long, and I said, well, that's just what God had to say. I'm not going to take the blame for that one. And then uh, today might be a little shorter. Uh, but then also I uh, preached a wedding on Saturday, yesterday, I preached a wedding um, and so uh, we've been kind of all over the place doing different things, but it's always been a, an opportunity to reach people. And that's what it's all about, right? And that's what it should be about. So whenever I left the wedding rehearsal on Friday night, uh, it, it got kind of late. You know how those things are, the wedding rehearsals. They're, they're planned well, but it just doesn't go as planned. And so there was people that were late. There was people that was lost. It was out in... Uh, the southern part of the county, I guess, or western, down past Meneth, out in the creek roads and all that, way in the middle of nowhere. And some people got lost, and we started late. But uh, the cool thing was is that afterward, whenever I left there, uh, it was dark. And whenever it was dark, uh, I pulled out, and within just 100 yards, uh, a couple of yearling deer jumped out in front of me. And that's all, you know, it's always cool. I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm a hunter. I mean, those, some of you would be appalled by that. I know that uh, some of you have uh, heard that I have shot a gun before and, 
you feel really like, wow, he can do that or whatever. Like, I thought he was a preacher and a chiropractor or something like that. What's he doing that for? Um, yeah, I, I used to be an avid hunter. Now I don't just because I don't have as much time. But uh, I do a lot of, uh, I like to clay shoot. I like to do many things. Uh, I like to just uh, uh, plink and shoot around a little bit as well. As a matter of fact, since I'm uh, talking about this, I took Rollin out for the first time with the 22. Um, with a rifle and uh, he did very well. I was really surprised like I was like holding the gun with one hand and he was like aiming and doing the thing. And I said you line these open sights, you line these up, you do this and the tab and all this and when he pulled the trigger he actually shot the aluminum can and I was like this thing is rigged or something is going on. I could not believe it. Well I guess it was the instructor that probably that helped him the most. But his, uh, his skill level went, uh, he was really excited because he shot it the first time and then he missed a couple of times uh, but then he shot it a couple more times and was very excited about it. And I'm not turning him loose anytime soon, but uh, it was still fun. So anyway, um, I, I ju I, I'm in my van and we're driving, I'm driving down the road and these two de deer jump out into the headlights. Right, and we all know the deer in the headlights look and he, they're both staring into the, the headlights and kind of looking appalled at what are you going to do to me, you know, <laughs> type thing. Or they probably couldn't even see me. But uh, then I, I took off a little bit and the one immediately bolted for the woods. And the other one kind of took off in front of me and kind of just kept going on the gravel road. We're like cruising along and I stopped for a minute and uh, I guess she uh, turned around and looked at me and uh, I would move a little bit more and she would just take off down the gravel road. I was like, well, I'm kind of giving you an opportunity. I don't want to take your life, okay? I want you to move out of the way. And then immediately, I kind of, my mind went to, well, what if I'm still chasing this thing when I get back to St. Gen? You know, I mean, it's I'm chasing a deer through St. Genevieve, might be a little awkward. And then so uh, uh, I get past that immediately. So then I chase her a little bit longer, and it goes on for a while. I stop, then I go, and I'm like, I really don't, if I go, I'm going to run over her. So uh, I give her a minute, and then, uh, you know, I try goose, and I didn't honk my horn. I just didn't, I don't know why, I didn't even think about it. I don't use my horn much, so... Anyway, so finally, whenever I moved forward, she took off running, and then she saw a field and jumped into that. A refuge. This morning, many of us are still running. We know where the refuge is. We know it's in Jesus' arms. We know God is our refuge. But we're still running like a deer in the headlights. We're still running straight ahead. We know that if we would just turn and go back, that God would accept us with open arms. <clears throat> I said I was going to start in Hebrews, and I just made that up, I guess, because I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to switch over, and I want us to go to uh, Psalm 46. You guys want to turn, hold the Hebrews don't lose that. It's probably not going anywhere, but. Psalm 46 and 1. Psalm's in the middle of your Bible. I always tell my youth it's kind of in the middle, and it starts with a P, even though it sounds like Psalm, more like an S. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and, and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. God is our refuge. Now, I believe that I believe that, that deer knew where the refuge was. I truly believe, believe that, but I think that she was kind of frozen. She was out of her realm. She was uh, not, not used to having headlights shined in her eyes. And uh, a lot of deer, you know, they spend the nighttime traveling. They are nocturnal. They, they do a lot of movement in the nighttime. And then, so you know how you are whenever you're in a dark room, maybe watching a movie, and somebody flips the lights on. Your first, you know, your first thing is like, I, I don't think a deer can get their paws up, you know, their hooves up to uh, cover their eyes. But um, your first thing is like, oh, I cannot believe how bright that is. And we could, we could probably, uh, we could take this so many different directions. But this morning, I believe that we, we are running like the deer runs. The deer doesn't know its surroundings. We are, we are in the midst of possibly sickness. You're in the midst of a storm in your life. You are in the midst of 
of developing an addiction to something. You are uh, pacing yourself not toward God, but possibly away from God. I told the deacons this morning that every week that goes by, I hear more and more stories in our county, in St. Genevieve County. I'm not talking about like St. Louis. In our county of addiction, of problems that have come up because of certain addictions and uh, a lot of problems that we are facing are centered around sin and uh, not really facing God, not really coming toward God, but moving away from Him. In Romans 8, 35, it says here, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? But in all these things we are overwhelmingly conquered through Him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things uh, present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what is it, what is it about running from God? Why is it that we continue to do that? I believe it's a selfish desire. I believe we think we can do it by ourselves. Guys, we can do it by ourselves, right? We are really good at doing it by ourselves. We can build fires by ourselves. I don't need any help, right? I know how to do it. But what I have learned over time is that if you will, uh, even in secular things, if you will reach out to someone that has been there before, then you will reach out to someone that has maybe built that fire before. You'll reach out to someone like, well, one time I built a fire and it took off and it was too big. Well, if I would have maybe done that and we would have maybe built the fire smaller, if I would have asked someone, they could have helped me build that fire a little bit better. Now, this deer that was running, maybe he should, she should have asked her sister there that bolted directly for the refuge. See, I think that was a godly deer. It was a godly deer that immediately jumped right into the sticks, right? Because that deer knew what was coming. It was headlights. And the headlights are scary. And I'm getting out of here. I'm seeking the refuge. And that's really what we should do. When we get into trouble, like it's saying here, uh, I am convinced that all of these things will not separate us from the Lord. He is our refuge. Why do we run for him, from Him? Why do we keep running away from the one thing that we know is for certain? This, this ver these verses here in Romans 8 are so powerful because they really don't leave anything untouched. I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor all of these things, nor powers height or depth or created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God. All of those things, even some of those that I skipped, it pretty well named anything that we could come up with cannot separate us from the love of God. So why is it that we separate ourselves from Him? He is not separating Himself from us. We are separating and running from Him. So over in uh, Hebrews 12, we will get back to that right away. Over in Hebrews 12, we are in uh, verse... Six, and I'd like for that to be up uh, in uh, King James. We're going to read it straight off of the screen here because I have the NIV. Thank you. Uh, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he received. If. A lot of THs in there. <laughs> so uh, God loves us and is chasing us. Kind of like the uh, deer in the headlights. We keep running. Yeah, he's chasing us. Now, we have uh, calamity. We have things that we are not ready to face. See, if we left it up to ourselves, we would never face any endurance of anything. We always pray for ourselves to be out of the endurance. We are normally, and, and it's okay to do that, but we maybe need to seek God's face in some of our, uh, the things that we're facing. Maybe it's a, a judgment of God on, on something. Maybe it's God calling you towards something else. How many times have you, we could probably uh, stand and have testimony of you uh, facing a job loss or a change and ultimately it was better in the end? Or you having changed houses? Or those of, you, uh, those of you that had changed jobs and you are now here in our church body? It was a very uncertain time. It was a time where you were giving up other things, but now you are finding yourselves here at First Baptist, a place where God has called you. A refuge in time of trouble. That's where God uh, wants us to be. In his arms. So we live in a very hectic world. We live in a world that 
uh, we, find our, we find a lot of trouble in it. Uh, Tracy and I see a lot of this. Uh, people come in with many, many, many stories of uh, how they've lost their house, how they've lost their husband, how they've lost this or this or this, and it is always a very tragic moment. And we try to, we try to, uh, we, they, want, they want money. They want a solution. But the real solution is not always money. As a matter of fact, most of the time, if we look at it and pick it apart, their real solution would be to follow God. Their real solution would be to turn from wherever they are, immediately turn and seek refuge in Jesus. But uh, that's not, that doesn't really fall too well on their ears. I mean, a lot of times we can meet their needs first and then minister to them as well. Uh, that sometimes becomes difficult, but we can, still, we can still do that. But I think that in, when we seek a refuge in God, and in God alone, when we find ourselves in trouble, he will find, you will see that He is your place of safety. He is the one that you will turn to. But, but I think the bottom line is, is that we will turn to Him whenever we have built a relationship with Him. Whenever my kids... Uh, wow. Let's just start that statement easily. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't finish this one. So whenever, uh, whenever, we, lo whenever we lose one of our kids, <laughs> all the times that we've lost them, um, you know, you will, uh, you will find yourself as a parent, even, uh, even then wandering off just like around the corner. And then it seems like every time you go chasing them, they will wander around the same next corner and you will be within two aisles of each other, but still you can't see each other. But whenever Chamberlain, Chamberlain's pretty good about getting lost. He loves to run, but then he also loves to retreat because whenever he runs, he's, uh, he, he gets himself into a position, he flips out for a second. Uh, like, I can't believe I've gone this far away. I need to run all the way back. So he usually comes back in tears. He usually comes back because he thought that it was going to be the end. He thought, I've lost mommy and daddy forever, right? I will never, ever be back again. And I think that whenever we have built this relationship, uh, we've, we can think about these relationships with people too. Like whenever, uh, whenever I build relationships with teenagers, when I build these relationships and they have issues, when that relationship is built, then it will uh, automatically um, help them whenever they need a place to turn. It will be a relationship that's already established. It'll be a place they have already turned. They have already uh, made acquaintance with me, and then it will be easier to turn to me instead of maybe somewhere else. That's why it's important for us to build a relationship with others. That's why it's important for us to um, make sure our friends and family members know that we can be a refuge, a godly refuge, to turn them back to where Christ wants them to be. All right, over in Psalm 9, I'd like for us to uh, go to Psalm 9 right away. We'll go over there. We were in 46, so we're going to 9. A lot of page turning. Okay, uh, NIV uh, is where I'm reading from, Psalm 9. I will praise you, O Lord, with all of my heart. I will tell of all of your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to you in your name. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you, for you have upheld my right hand and my cause. You have sat on your throne judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken the enemy. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He will judge all the world in righteousness. He will govern all the peoples with justice. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. Those you know your name, uh, those who know your name will trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. See, God has uh, this timeless thing going on. God has no real time to worry about. We have deadlines. We have uh, time. We have the clock ticking all of the time. 
And God is not really concerned about time. So our timing and God's timing is always different, isn't it? It's always a, a thing that we're praying about. God, I have my electric bill due on Wednesday, and my check is coming on Friday. And we see that as a problem. And God has a way of fixing those types of things. And that's a pretty simple, uh, quick solution to that problem. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that God's timing is perfect in everything that you do. God's timing in your job loss. God's timing uh, in the times you're uh, uh, needing to find your way back to Him. The timing in your sickness, the timing in your calamity, the timing in the losses in your life, and maybe even the deaths in your life uh, are the things that are going to turn you back to Him. There is a timing there to, for you to seek Him in refuge. <clears throat> I've had a couple of chances to hunt in wildlife refuges. Uh, I guess I'd call them that, state parks or whatever. My father and I, we always put in for these special hunts, these muzzleloader hunts each and every year. We don't get chosen very often, but we uh, put in for these hunts and like 1,300 people enter for 12 spots or something like that. There's not a real chance of really getting to go. But whenever you get to go, there are deer running everywhere. We went to uh, Babbler State Park. That's up by Six Flags, kind of. Uh, <laughs> not that close to Six Flags, but anyway. I just had a vision for a second. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, we can use those roller coasters. And so anyway, all right, back to my sermon. So anyway, we're at Babbler State Park, and uh, we've, uh, we got chosen for it. And the deer, it's kind of interesting, they weren't really scared of you. I mean, they, they would look at you and, I don't know, maybe comment or something. They wouldn't really say a whole lot. They would just kind of stand there, and uh, if you, you could choose whether you wanted that one or not. And then they'd mosey on around and not really concerned about you too much. Because I guess they felt like they were in their refuge. I don't know. They were in this place that, that they had never really been bothered by anyone. Uh, that I think there's a couple of walking trails through there also. So uh, maybe they had seen a lot of humans before. I'm not for sure. But whenever they saw us, they weren't really concerned. There's at times 40 or 50 would just go right, right by us within, I don't know, right to here. They just go by and look and just, you know, keep going on by. And that's kind of like this uh, refuge that we're talking about. Whenever we are familiar with the refuge, when we are familiar with God, it's a place that feels like home. It's a place that is not uh, new. Whenever we are, sometimes whenever we're seeking refuge, uh, we, we see that as maybe a new place. But a refuge is a place that you're used to. A place that uh, you have visited before. You have visited the arms of God before. You have been in His presence before. Because maybe you, are, you have already been there and you know what it feels like to be there. Just as I was talking about Chamberlain, him getting lost and him coming back. I do think that it's uh, difficult uh, to trust in our world. It's difficult to trust people. I, I really try to push the trust thing, uh, the, the non-trust or untrust thing to the side whenever it comes to uh, meeting people and uh, wanting to hear their stories and things like that. Because ultimately... Um, I'll be straight with you that uh, there's so many people that come into the office, your heart kind of gets hardened toward their stories and the trust factor ultimately kind of goes out the window a lot because the stories that they bring are not always completely the truth about what's really going on. And the, the trust factor that we have uh, because of the, the things that we see on the news. And uh, I, heard a, I, had a, I heard a story from one of you this week that I saw somebody broken down on the side of the road uh, in a place that was kind of out in the, uh, not in the city, but kind of out and turned around to go and help someone that they didn't even know. I used to be really big on that and I still would support that, but my trust uh, to other people has not been so great. Now, if it's somebody that I know, if I pass, you know, if I put past Travis, you know, and he's in his blue truck, kind of broke down on the side of the road, I, I would think, I'd call a DJ and say, would you go help, you know, I'd try to, I'd try to help Travis. <clears throat> so we do, have a, we do have a trust factor that's going to enter in. So that's why we build these relationships. That's why we build our relationship with Christ today. And that's why it's so important for us to know God as our refuge. As we close today, I want you to think about the times you've trusted people. And I want you to think about uh, the, the times you've trusted someone and it hasn't worked out. And I want, to, I want you to think about those times because those are the ones that really stick in your head. The ones where you've trusted someone and it worked out are not really the ones that really you probably think about. But today I want you to think about the times you've trusted someone and it didn't work. And I want you to, I want you to uh, pray for that person this morning. 
I want you to try to think about reestablishing that relationship and fixing that relationship is that, if that's somewhere where God has called you to. And after you've thought of that one, I want you to think about your relationship with Christ. I want you to think about your relationship with God and how close you used to be. How close you used to be and you used to know His name. This morning we talked about in, in Sunday school. Uh, there's a song, actually. Um, Would I know your face if I saw you? It's, a, it's an awesome song. That's some of the lyrics are part of the lyrics. Would you know God if he stepped right in front of you? Would you know him if you heard his voice? Would you know him like that deer knew the woods, knew, knew directly to jump directly, excuse me, right into the woods whenever there was something wrong, to come back? Or are you the deer that's running straight ahead? Are you the deer that don't, you don't really know what's going on because there's so many things? We talked about partially about distractions this morning. What are the things that are keeping you from honoring God each and every day? Today I want you to think about what's keeping you from Jesus today. What is keeping you from trusting Him? And when is the last time you've trusted Him and made Him your refuge? I guess uh, we'll have Sam come up and he's going to play a song for us and then we'll have our communion this morning. But I want us to, I want us to all stand this morning and I want us to bow our heads. Whenever it's time for the, uh, whenever a thunderstorm comes or a tornado comes, my, uh, my mother is the first to call. And it's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying because the, the, the chances of a tornado are pretty low, I guess. But uh, mom calls. to check and see if I knew, to seek shelter, to seek refuge. If it's raining, that's a warning. If it's cloudy, that's a warning. But when you see the tornado, it's time. It's time to come. Whenever you are in the headlights and running, it's time. I know many of you are hurting. I see uh, some tears. And I know that you're hurting. Struggling. Running. I pray that the rest of you are uh, already knowing who Jesus is. Today I want to give you an opportunity to come to the altar and leave it for Jesus. As the song plays, we're going to have the altars open. And uh, it, is a, it is a place for you to come and bow. It's a place for you to get out of your seat and, and take action and show God that you're serious about seeking refuge. To show God that you are serious about doing something about where you are, about the suffering that you are dealing with, the addiction that has taken over you. The powerful thing about getting out of your seat and coming up here is that you are taking action. And I think that would be a powerful thing this morning, that you would come and leave it at the cross, at the altar, and give it to Jesus and pray to him, even if you don't know how, just to say, God, I have this, and I don't know what to do about it. I think it is time to stop running. Even though that seems easier, today is your last day of running. But only if you turn it over to Jesus. Only if you seek Him as your refuge. And today I pray that you do. I pray that you turn those tears into something you can leave at the altar. The frustration you have with your child the frustration you have with your mom and dad. The frustration you have with your checkbook. The frustration that you have with church. The frustration that you have with this. Get real today.
and leave it at the altar. Sam, go ahead.
prepare the table. You know, just cause the uh, just cause the song's over doesn't mean it's over. If you need to get alone and be with God, you can go out there, go find yourself in the grass, go down here at the end of this hall, go down wherever you need to be, but finish dealing with it. Many of you are still battling and uh, still running. I just encourage you to do that. So as we prepare the table this morning, this is our time of communion. This is uh, uh, the Lord's Supper, as we call it. And we want to invite you, if you're saved and believe in the blood of Jesus, and you uh, <clears throat> know him as your personal Savior, we would ask that you uh, take this uh, Lord's Supper with us. And also... Uh, if you don't mind to hold it until we are all served and then we will receive together. <clears throat> so as the scripture says, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples. Brother Burton, would you ask the blessing on the uh, bread this morning? We do need help. All right. He passes out. We'll call someone. Yeah. Uh, um, Matt, would you help us over here? Would you mind? And Brother Ed, would you help us over here? <clears throat> and I see, uh, I see many of you sitting around, and it's a kind of a solemn day, but this is a joyous moment. I mean, this is a thing we uh, smile about. I even caught Burton smiling a while ago. And uh, not, I didn't really mean anything by that, but I'm just saying that this is, a, it is solemn, it is, it's good to be respectful uh, of this moment, but it's also a joyous occasion for us. This is something we remember, yes, Jesus died, but yes, Jesus also rose again and uh, is coming again, right? And uh, we don't ever want to forget that. So uh, wanna, uh, what do we want to close with? You want to uh, sing a song or we want to, let's come across the aisles, let's do it that way. Right, you're not talking. We'll keep praying, Sam, that it continues. <laughs> okay. All right. This is Pastor Appreciation Month. Where is Miss? Miss is in, wow, she's in with the kids' church. Somebody went. Okay, somebody went to get her. Okay, faster. Okay. You're going to have to pass this along to Missy. Okay. We'll wait on We can wait on it. We she, have this she, as a church body to give to Ryan awesome, and to his you. wife who supports him in this and allows him to do all the wonderful things he does for us. We do appreciate yes. you. We Thank hope you, that you can use these. All right. We'll do it. I, pre I appreciate you guys. and. With, uh, I'm kind of thinking she might bust through the door at any moment, but uh, we could just talk about her until she gets here, I guess. And, uh, well, maybe that would be so well. We want a full report. On full what report. You gave her. Okay. 
what, what's in there? Right. Bath and Body Works. I don't know if I could use any of that. Thank you so much for all Thanks. you guys. Thanks. All right. Well, it, uh, I'm going to tell you that, um, uh, well, ultimately, ministry would be nothing without you guys, <laughs> you know? And uh, the cool thing about your problems is it gives us something to do. <laughs> uh, it gives us things to pray for. It does. And it uh, gives us uh, uh, outreach. It gives us a way to serve God. And uh, job, security. job security. Amen, right? <laughs> job security because we are, uh, we, are definitely, uh, we are definitely just thankful to have a church body that uh, receives us so well. I'm thankful to have uh, teenagers that uh, receive my jokes so well. And uh, they, uh, they're, they're good at laughing. They all have their fake laugh. And then uh, we're Sam. Sam, she has her, her fake little giggles. She, whenever I, uh, Sam, uh, Sam is most of the time uh, Wednesday night, some Sunday mornings. She's a uh, homeschool. She's been around us for so long, for like six years or so. And uh, I'm embarrassing her now, but uh, Sam Norman, she's from out at, uh, out at the Ridge, and she's homeschool. We make fun of her all the time for both of those things. And uh, we, we love her so much, but she has this little giggle. Like when it's not really funny, but yet uh, uh, she still wants to like approve of what I was doing. She just has a little giggle. So kind of like she's getting ready to do here in a second. So anyway, hey, you doing all right? Yeah. Thanks for coming in. How's all those kids? Sorry. Oh, thanks. You have the church bath and body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, um, for those of you that uh, always want to know how I can get here so often, it's because of her. She's uh, always uh, chasing the rugrats everywhere, taking them everywhere they need to go, uh, putting miles on the truck, things like that. Just uh, There's always something to be done. There's four kiddos, and there's always a, a blessing to be had through that. And uh, I just have to thank you for your patience with both of us. Uh, and for all four of the kids, thank you for your patience. And uh, when they're running and jumping the pews and going crazy, and you just say, oh, that's a, that's a preacher's kid or something, whatever you guys say about that. So uh, we're thankful. Uh, Missy was a preacher's kid. She knows what well, you know exactly what it's like. And if you know Steve, then you know why, right? So anyway, thank you for uh, all of your blessings. You don't know how much it means uh, for us to be here this long and to continue serving and uh, letting us do each and everything we do. Um, uh, there's always tons of support. And you know who you people are that you're always willing uh, to step up when we call on you. Thank you so much. Thank you, deacons. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll hope, where's Rogers? You told me I was supposed to hold on to that or something. Rogers? Perhaps, oh. am I, I, I thought I'd try it. I mean, you know. Roger who? Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was a better joke than mine. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to close in prayer. Anybody feel led to pray this morning? I mean, it's been kind of like a... wasn't singing. I don't know. How come you weren't singing? You, you weren't, you're not going to sing happy birthday? Did, were you singing something else? Ah. Uh. <laughs>
Thank you for watching Channel 798. Thank you for watching Channel 798. Hi, thank you very much for watching Channel 798.